Auto Line Daily is brought to you by Bridgestone, your journey, our passion. And by Dow Automotive Systems, improving durability and increasing design flexibility with Betamate structural adhesives at DowBetamate.com. Hello and welcome to AutoLine Daily. I'm Sean McRoy filling in for John again, but now let's move on to the news. New car sales in the U.S. market surged stronger than expected, largely thanks to special deals for the Thanksgiving holiday at the end of the month. The SAR hit 16.3 million vehicles, which is a very strong rate. Total vehicle sales hit 1.2 million units, up 4.5% from a year ago. But not all automakers kept up with the market. Honda lost the most market share of any automaker, followed by Volkswagen and BMW. Ford, Mazda, Hyundai, and Volvo also all lost share. The biggest gainers were General Motors and Chrysler, who were up very strong, followed by the amazing Subaru. Other gains were posted by Nissan, Toyota, Kia, Daimler, Jaguar Land Rover, and Mitsubishi. Once again, trucks outsold cars and gained market share over cars as well. No doubt, falling gasoline prices in the U.S. are pe- playing a role in changing the market mix. One interesting side note here, sales of the Tesla Model S plummeted. Not compared to a year ago, but compared to the month before. That's when stories broke of several Model S's catching fire after being involved in severe accidents. Sales fell 23%. Looks like those headlines about the fires scared off a big chunk of customers for now. Overall, the sales picture is quite good, but now we'll have to wait and see if those Thanksgiving holiday sales pull customers into November and end up hurting sales this month. And speaking of sales, sales of Mitsubishi's tiny electric vehicle, the iMeV, have gone nowhere. Last month, only 12 were sold. Yes, you heard me correct, just 12. And for the year, only a little over a thousand have been sold. So, in an effort to kickstart sales, Mitsubishi is slashing the price of its EV by over $6,000. The 2014 model now starts at about $23,000, and with the federal tax credit, the price drops to $15,500. As we've reported, Chevy, Honda, and Nissan have all cut prices of their EVs in order to boost sales. Earlier this year, Volvo showed off self-parking technology and now the company is starting a project to test autonomous cars on public roads in Sweden. The goal is to see how the cars react in real-world conditions, how other drivers interact with the self-driving cars, and what infrastructure is needed for autonomous driving. Research begins next year, but the first cars won't hit the road until 2017. The company will test 100 cars in and around the city of Gothenburg, but did not say what model or models will be equipped with the technology. A few years back, Toyota signed a contract with BMW to collaborate on things like a fuel cell system, a sports car platform, and sourcing diesel engines. And the Corolla-based 2014 Toyota Verso will be the first vehicle from the Japanese automaker to carry a BMW diesel power plant under the hood. It's a 1.6-liter turbocharged four-cylinder diesel engine that puts out a little over 100 horsepower and 270 pound-feet of torque. Several new components were developed for a seamless match between the engine and Toyota gearbox and the vehicle electronics. New engine mounts, a new gearbox housing and gearing, and a stop-start system were all required. Production starts in January of 2014 at Toyota's manufacturing facility in Turkey, which also produces the latest generation Corolla. The Verso is available in Europe and a few other markets overseas. Coming up next, a look at the styling cues of the new Rolls-Royce Wraith. Here's one of the great things about the all-around performance of our Dueler tires. Excellent traction! Do you need a ladder? Yes, I do. Okay. At Bridgestone, our passion for performance knows no bounds. Earlier this year, Rolls-Royce took the wraps off the Wraith the most powerful car ever in the company's lineup. It's just rolling out to dealers now, and here's a look at the design elements of the car. Hello, my name is Alex Innes. I'm one of the designers from the Rolls-Royce Motor Cars design team, and I was involved in the creation of this wonderful car, the Wraith. And I'd like to take a couple of minutes just to talk you through some of the key design elements. 
Now, if we're to talk about the overarching inspiration for this car, it was the clear knowledge that this would be the most powerful car in the Mark's history. And that is probably mo most evident here at the front end of the car. So straight away you have this deep set um, grille which draws a parallel with the intakes on jet engine aircraft. So there's a, a performance uh, quality to it. In the overall graphic of the car, there's a focus and intensity to the face of the car that we have not yet seen in recent times. Here it's all about the promise of power, but without overstatement. Now, uh, if we're to move back along the body side, we th feel there are three key lines that make up um, the design cues for this car. So first of all, you have this pure, clean, uninterrupted shoulder line running all the way out to the rear. And in complement to that, you then have the fastback profile, which runs up and right the way out to the rearward extremity of the car. This is the boldest statement the car makes, and it, uh, it is a character-defining feature seen inside profile. And in balance to these two lines, we have a more genteel quality to the line that comes through the glass house and down into the body side. And it's here, this line, which we've coined the waftability line alluding to the effortless nature with which the car drives. Now if we were to come back to the rear of the car, here there is a definite nautical feel to the vehicle with a lot of plan taper as the two volumes converge towards the rear. It's also important to note that the car shown here is in a two-tone and that was very much part of the design thinking from the outset. So we have this clean intersect running along the shoulder um, to give a very clinical break between the upper and lower volume. Okay, so let's take a look at the interior of the car. So as with the exterior, we're very keen to strike a different uh, tone for this car. In essence, we wanted to reduce the formality and we wanted to include the driver in the overall driving experience. So you sit much lower in this car than you do in any of our others. The IP is slightly higher and the performance message also extends to the steering wheel. So the overall diameter is slightly smaller and the outer rim is ever so slightly thicker, encouraging a slightly more spirited drive. Now something else on this car that we're extremely proud of is the open pore veneer application, Canadel panelling. Named after Le Canadel on the south of France where Sir Henry Royce had his summer home towards the end of his life, what we've done here in the car is mimic the same way that the trees line that beautiful cove by encircling the occupants with this striking straight grain veneer application. It's given me great pleasure to talk to you around Ray. I hope you enjoy the video. And before I'd sign off, I'd like to remind you to watch tomorrow night's Auto Line After Hours. Joining John and the auto extremist, Peter DiLorenzo, is Jeff Bracken, the Group VP and General Manager of Lexus, who will be bringing an IS into the studio. So if you've got any questions about Toyota's luxury division, send them our way and tune in to tomorrow's show at 6 p.m. Eastern Time at our website, autoline.tv. But that's a wrap for today. I'm Sean McElroy. Thanks for watching and please join us again right here tomorrow.